What is happening guys, Kadi Plays here bringing you another Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel video and in today's video I'm going to be doing a meta report for this past week's tournaments uh, so it's going to be October 24th through October 30th I want to apologize for not uh, uploading really any videos this past week I've had some personal stuff going on and I just haven't been able to sit down and take the time to record but we are back now and hopefully back and better than ever but without further ado, let's jump right on in because we got a lot of tournaments and a lot of decks to cover. Starting off with the Hay Cup 35, uh, we had 43 players, single Elim, one deck, best of one before semifinals, and best of three for semifinals and finals as per usual. The first place deck was a Flu Wonderies. Uh, Flu has been, you know, kind of, there's been a resurgence in popularity uh, since the hit map. I think people were like, okay, no more Flu right now, and then everyone was like, wait a minute, this deck's still amazing, so let's play it. Um, nothing too crazy going on here. We got three tributes, uh, no Avion. I do like that. Um, unless I'm missing something, this doesn't look too crazy. Extra deck is pretty standard. Then we have a eight axis blind going second deck. This in these tournaments, this stuff wins all the time because it's best of one for the majority of the tournament, and there's no side deck. At least I don't think there's a side deck. Yeah, there's no side deck. So you know, you know, do with this information what you will, but. Um, you know, we see this win a lot in best of ones or no side deck tournaments. So it's 50 cards, kind of a lot of cards, but we're playing the branded stuff. So it does definitely have some going first plays. Um, yeah, it's, it's a little bit more of a well-rounded list. I think it's pretty interesting. Well played to them. Then we have a pure sword soul here. Uh, main decking anti-spell, just one. That's a little weird. You're only playing one, but you know, whatever works. Um, yeah, this is only, this is pure. So really no tinnies, you know? So, yeah, very interesting. Then we have a top four branded Despia. This looks more of a standard list. You know, we're playing the edge and stuff. We're playing some hand traps here. Uh, Twin Twisters in the main. Obviously, it's a non-side deck tournament, so that makes sense. Got the Pot of Prosperity. Nothing looks too crazy here. There's no Super Poly that I'm seeing. No Allure. No Droplets. Okay, nice. Yeah, if I'm, unless I'm missing something, this looks pretty pretty normal. All right, moving on to, we got Damage Step number 50, hosted by DLE Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, 60 players, single Elim, one deck, 15 card side deck. It's a best of three as well, so obviously if that doesn't make sense. Like, well, with the 15 card side deck, of course, there's a best of three here. Breakdown, we have a lot of Sword Soul. We have Sword Soul, Despia, Dragon Link, then Flu Underies, rounding out the top four most popular decks. Then we got, you know, some fall off here. But it's good to see Dragon Link. Dragon Link. Dragon Link's been getting gaining a lot of popularity recently. I've personally been getting a lot of messages, like on Discord, about, hey, like, will can we can we practice some Dragon Link stuff? I want to pick the deck up, so on and so forth. Which that's great to see. You know, the deck's awesome. It's really fun to play. But I do think it's starting to fall off. I think the meta is sort of starting to shift, and Dragon Link's kind of on the downturn. But I will talk about that in a later video. But anyways, getting on into the breakdown for this tournament, we have the first place Virtual World deck here. This is really shocking to me. I feel like this deck is, um, honestly, I don't think this deck is very good. I, I don't really know um, how this won, but it, it certainly did. I mean, I'm, I guess we were Scythe Locking. Scythe Locking going first. Okay, you know, that's fair. Um, going second, this does have the ability to play through a lot. Um, only playing six hand traps, though. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, well, very well played to them. It's good to see this deck back into the format since it's been out of the format for so long, since the, um, you know, nerf to VFD. But, you know, having the three Roshis back, that def definitely helps. But I'm honestly shocked to see this, but I'm happy to. But nothing looks too crazy. It looks like a pretty standard list to me. Uh, one Talents in the... One Talents in the side deck? That's... One Talents, one Nib... That's one token collector. I guess, oh, okay, well, the to one token collector makes sense because you can just dump it off Beatrice, but the one talents, one nib. If I'm missing something, let me know in the comment section below, but I don't understand why the one-ups. Um, yep. Yeah. Anyways, moving on, we got a top, oh, uh, he's got a second place flew under Rees list here. This looks pretty standard just looking at it right now. No max C, no D shifter. That's, oh no, we do have D shifter. So no max C, that's a little unstandard. Playing one book of moon, um, playing the imperms over maxi okay all right that's a that's a def, definitely a choice that you can make um this might have been the guy that i lost to did i lose to this guy 
in this tournament? No. I did not lose this guy in this tournament. I think I lost this guy in the um, GG Tour. But, anyways. Okay. Um, these are just Ghost Reaper targets, aren't they? Yeah, just Ghost Reaper targets. Psyduck, uh, kind of standard, just a bunch of three ofs. Uh, then we got a top four. Sword Soul, Pure Sword Soul, again, very, it's, I think this is the same list. This is, like, basically the exact same list as what we just saw in the other one. Uh, main deck, one anti-spell. Nope, it's not the same. They were playing two blackouts over here. Yeah, they are playing two blackouts. So it's not the same, but very similar. Interesting that people are starting to go with this, for whatever reason. Side deck looks pretty standard, nothing too crazy. Only playing two maxis in the main board? Wow, that's bold. Uh, top four, we got a Salamangrate here. 41 cards, that's, that's a little strange, I don't know why it goes over 40. Um, playing this, I don't really know like why, but... Yep, that's been the main board, two Drolls. Uh, nothing crazy in the extra deck, nothing crazy in the side deck, no... Yeah, okay. Just a lot of two ofs. Interesting. No cross out in the main? That's kind of weird. Okay. Moving on to the third eye weekly number 31. We had 54 player or 56 players, sorry. Single Elim, one one deck, 15 card side deck, best of three. Top eight breakdown here. Got uh well we're about to see this, so I'm not gonna go over this. Uh, but we have a majority of people entering with Despia, then Sword Soul Tinny, then Dragon Link. See, Dragon Link's gaining a lot of popularity. Um, but that's there's a duality to that. The deck is the deck is not good with high numbers, I don't think, right now. Uh, but I'll talk about uh, like that, like I said, in a different video. Um, we got first place branded Despia here. We got the Serevis. Every time this guy plays, he plays Serevis. I still don't really fully understand the reasoning behind it. I don't understand the reasoning for like something like this over comedy, but... Um, you know, it, it, it works for him, you know, it, oh, oh, it's because of Branded and High Spirits, it's just a dragon that prevents targeting, okay, that makes sense, you know, he just wants more dragons, so, yeah, I mean, you're playing eight dragons here with the three Branded and High Spirits targets, this card's absolutely insane. I was playing this when the deck first came out, and everyone thought it was crazy, but this this card's insane. It's only going to get better with time. Uh, but two maxi in the main board, uh, one tragedy, three allures for three targets. That's a little weird. Uh, but okay. No branded opening. Yeah, these lists are always a little... This list, like, this guy's list is always a little strange to me, but he consistently wins with it, so... It's very, very well played. Uh, should all fusions and a should all beast in the side deck. I'm surprised this is not a dragon for the sideboard, but... You know, this works too. I guess this deck doesn't have too big of a problem with back row. Then we got a second place, uh, Medolce, shout out to Continuum. This is one of my teammates. Um, got second place with Medolce playing the 2 max Z. Gosh darn it. <laughs> I don't I don't understand the 2 max Z. I really don't. I don't understand the 1, the 1. Uh, but, you know, it works for him. You know, he consistently does good. So, yep. Got some side deck hand traps. Side deck looks pretty standard. Then we got top four Sword Soul. Shout out Prince. This is also one of my teammates. Um, got the got six, seven, eight, nine, nine hand traps. Unless I'm miscounting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, so ten hand traps. Pretty good. Pretty standard. Forty card Sword Soul. Very nice. Side deck looks pretty standard. Top four Despia here. This looks like more of a standard Despia build. You know, we got the three allures, the double Merc, double tragedy, you know. Um, the Despia, the bigger Despia monsters. That This guy, wait, wait. Obviously, he was not playing Albia. Um, Ad Libitum. Okay, that's super weird. I, I really don't know, like, how this works. But it does for him, so that's cool. But yeah, this looks like more of a standard list. Um, yeah, not too much to say on it. Side deck looks pretty standard. So you're siding the Underworld Goddess. That's interesting. Then we got a top eight Phantom Knights. Yep, this is just pure fan. Well, not pure Phantom Knights. It's just not Adventure Phantom Knights. This is so it's like the OG BA Phantom Knights with the tour guides, with the Buster Lock. You're going for you're going you're going for Union Carrier Locks. Uh, what is this? If your opponent has eight or more cards in their hands, they shuffle their entire hand in the deck, then draw two cards. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. I guess that works. Um, but yeah, I mean this this deck topped. That uh, cool. I mean six hand traps. Kinda crazy. Kinda crazy. 
Moving on, we got a top eight brand Despy here. This again looks a little bit more standard. You know, we got, well, the two Ash Blossoms, one Max C. What? That's so weird, but okay. Now that works. We got some, the Allure build. No Edge Gym stuff. Oh no, we do have Edge Gym stuff. I'm sorry. I cannot. My eyes are not working. But yeah, this looks pretty standard, except the weird race deals on hand traps. I don't really understand that. Um, one red reboot in the sideboard. I guess they didn't know it was at two. I'm not sure. But interesting. Okay. Top eight. We got a sword soul. Is this is not pure? This is more of a this is more of a standard sword soul. This is a sword soul tinny, as the few of the pass lists we've been seeing are. We got three, six, nine, ten, eleven, twelve hand traps in the main board. This looks a bit, little bit more standard. This is like, you know, higher hand trap count. We got the crimson blader in the extra deck. I love that. Uh, even though sword soul's falling off a little bit, it still is very, very good. Then we got a 60 card Christron Spiral deck. This is actually really cool. Uh, playing the Protos, playing the Emergence. What do you make? You make the yep. Yeah, you make the Grandmaster and Tinnies. There's Tinnies in here. Okay, so you, that's really cool. This is interesting. It, this is a lot more than what I initially said. It's it's Spiral Christron, you know, uh, Yang Zing combo Tinny. This is awesome. I love to see stuff like this. It's Probably the most, it's probably so inconsistent, but so much fun to play. So this is awesome. I love seeing stuff like this. Red Reboot in the main board, I mean, that's whatever. Um, you're playing 60, you're never going to draw that card. You're going to draw like 1 in 12 games. Yeah, this is this is interesting, but I like to see it. Shout out to, this, shout out to Gabe Power. This, this list is awesome. Moving on to, we got GG Tour, hosted by DLD Yu-Gi-Oh! and GG Tour. Um... We had 128 players, single elim, one deck, 15 cards, side deck, best of three, of course. We have a lot of branded Despian, a lot of Sword Soul entered. The majority of the decks were branded Despian and Sword Soul. And then we got Dragon Link and then Marincess, then Salad, and we start to fall off from there. But uh, see, Dragon Link, it's, you know, if it's the third most entered deck, it it's being prepared for. That's the problem. And if Dragon Link is being prepared for, um, it is no longer as lethal, which is very unfortunate. Um, I think that's why I saw a lot of success in a lot of the other Dragon Link players, why they saw success, is because people were not um, like mentally and physically prepared for the deck. And it's hard to beat that deck if you're not prepared for it. But We got first place, uh, Salaman Great. Shout out to check this out. This is also one of my teammates. Uh, he just joined, the, just joined the team about a week ago, and you know he picked up a dub in the GG Tour as, basically as soon as he joined, which is awesome. So shout out to him. Uh, this just looks like a really standard, you know, salad list. Uh, lots of hand traps, you know, lots of engine, consistent engine. Um, I like the ratios here. Uh, the only thing would be like one nib is a little weird to me. Uh, I think one of hand traps are a little weird. But in a situation like this, when you're playing so many of them, it makes a little bit more sense. Um, I mean, you're like, what are you playing? You're playing 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 hand traps. You're playing 14 hand traps, so you're going to see pretty much two every single game. And, like, you know, seeing two, you don't necessarily need to see Nib, even though Nib is very good to see. Um, so, yeah, I, I like this. I Overall, this is really good. He's also probably playing this. One reason is for the cross-out. Because um, Nib is okay in the format, but not amazing. But, yeah, this is, a, this is a really nice list. Really clean. Then you got some, you know, some other, like, you know, got the third Droll, the third Valor, a one DD Crow. I think the one DD Crow is a little interesting, but... Uh, the two nibs that make it up to three if you're playing against something. Double token collector, you know, some floodgates. Very, very well played. Then we got a uh, second place, Salaman Great. This is, I think, the same list as the one that they got top four with. The Bitron is still very strange to me. Um, I don't know why this is in the list as opposed to, like, you know, other salad cards. But, you know, do what you do. Um, yeah, this list also looks fairly standard. The cross out's still in the sideboard, which I find... Very, very strange. But it, it works. Then we got a top four. We got Pendulum Editions. Shout out to uh, Titacon, ATK, TTK. is one of my good friends. Um, this He topped very consistently with his deck. He's been on this deck since it got buffed, and he's been doing very well with it. He is playing the Maxi. We had a huge debate about this, and he was not playing Maxi. Uh, but I'm glad that he's on it, because th you need to play Maxi, I think. But... Yeah, this looks fairly standard from what I understand about Pendulum Magicians. Um, extra deck looks pretty standard. Side deck looks pretty standard. The shifter is really good in this deck because you can recycle it. You can infinite loop it with Time Star Magician, which is really cool. 
skill drains. Nice. All right, moving on to top four, we got a Adventure Despia deck here. Surprised to be seeing this. This is a very uh, inconsistent version of Despia um, compared to like the uh, Allure build or the Edgem build, but you know it's got a very high ceiling. You know, um, Branded Fusion resolves a little bit more consistently in a deck like this, which is very nice. So, yep, very well played. Then we got a top eight salad. There's a lot of salad in this tournament. And this looks like a little bit of a less standard list. You know, we're playing the foul, we're playing the uh, the mirror, the one ofs here uh, instead of like two uh, two or three jacks. I don't know if were these guys playing uh, Falco. Were they playing Falco? Okay, maybe Falco's not standard. I, I thought Falco was standard, but I also don't know salad as well as you know these guys do. A lot of one ups. This looks so weird to me. One one desires. One sign of mining. One TTT. Oh, <laughs> that makes sense. Um, you know, one raid. One war. One goes in. Okay. You know, and we're playing the Pyro Phoenix in the extra deck. Okay. You know, cool. You know, a little bit different take on it, and I like to see that. Um, top eight Dragon Link. Uh, glad to see this got top. This tops. Um, yeah, I, I I mean, you guys know how I feel about Dragon Link. I love this deck. I just wish it was in a, like, it was in such a good place because no one was prepared for it, but now that people are prepared for it, they're siding for it, they're main decking cards for it, it's like, especially Droll, like, really, it's Droll, like, Droll, having, having to beat Droll and Maxi makes this such an uphill battle right now, but I'm really glad to see this get top eight, uh, I lost in round two, one or two, I lost to Flunderies, I got god-handed, uh, in game two, but, uh, Game one and game two, actually. Um, you know, I, I got clapped up by Flo and Dereese in my in my in my GT to a run, but I'm glad to see this get a top. Uh, it's good to see that the extra deck looks pretty standard. Nothing crazy here. They're not playing the um, Dill. They're playing Triple Burst instead, which I don't disagree with necessarily. I personally have been playing Dill recently because I don't think you need the Link Three with the Dill Striker, but. Triple Burst still does come up sometimes, and he's playing, siding the Quackamiru, really like that. Overall, this is a very clean list, I like to see it. The 44 cards, you're not playing the grass stuff, which I don't necessarily disagree with, uh, but I, per I prefer the grass stuff, but I don't disagree with the, this take on it. This is a very uh, very nice list overall, so shout out to them. Then we got a top 8 Dragon Link as well, good, good to see this topping a lot actually. Uh, 60 cards, a bit more quote unquote standard for what the deck is currently looking like, but we do see the black, uh, the red eyes, the red eye stuff, this is not super standard. It's a lot of normal summons, you know, we got 3, 6, like we got uh, pure normal summons, we got 6 of them right here, that is kind of a lot, when you also have all these other normal summons that are good, um, but this is not the worst, you know, the red eye stuff is not bad by any stretch. Uh, I've been considering like trying it out a little bit more. Um, uh, nothing too crazy here. We are playing the Rocket Caliber, the Chaos Dragon, the Galaxy Spiral. That stuff's not unstandard. It's just not been in my list recently. Um, yeah, overall, this is a really nice list. He's also playing the, he's playing the Zombie Vampire over the Dill, over the Quad Boral, and the Triple Burst over the Dill at Quad Boral. So, uh, not that that's unstandard, just that it's different than what I've been running. Then we got a top 8 Marincess. It's good to see this get top 8. Uh, I don't know this deck. I don't know the ins and outs of this deck too, too well, but it looks f pretty standard to me. Um, you know, you got all your one card starters, basically. These aren't all one card starters, I know, but a lot of them can be. Uh, lots of hand traps, lots of consistency cards. Very nice. Uh, Crystal Heart. This was very popular. This has been very popular in Master Duel, but not in like TCG and stuff like that, so that's important to note, but very well played to them. Moving on to the China Master Duel Tibia Weekly number 26. We've got 64 players, 6 rounds of BO1 Swiss into best of 3 top 16. 1 deck, 15 card side deck. Top 16 breakdown right here, but we've got 2 Sword Soul Tinnies, 2 uh, Tri Zoo, 1 Adam Vader, 1 Hero, 1 FTK Magician. I don't know if that's Pin Magician or what. 1 Shadal, uh, 1 Phantom Rides Burning Abyss, 1 Fluendaries, 1 Ultra Geist, 1 Virtual World, 1 True Draco, 1 Tri Lyralusk, 1 Branded Despia, and 1 Eldritch. Winning deck was a Pendulum Magician. This is the FTK version because we are playing the Nightingale with the Instant Fusion. For those of you who don't know, you basically FTK with like the Instant Fusion, this thing, and then all of these guys. Really toxic, but yeah, it's in the game, so he, they're abusing it. Um, side deck, I don't know. This looks kind of normal to me. I mean, if you're not main decking Maxi, you should be siding it. 
Uh, I'm surprised they're not playing the shifter though. Second place, 60 card Ad Emancipator. Uh, it's like a link climb Ad Emancipator. This is a pretty cool list. Um, I like the grass list. I like grass decks. I think they're so fun, but this doesn't look too crazy. They are playing uh, fansies instead of. Uh, no, they are playing dropsies too. Okay. They are playing. The, yeah, they're just not playing uh, the red one, the fire. I forgot its name. But, yep. Okay, so they're playing three different pranks. Uh, usually the decks only play two, but I guess in 60 you can bump it up to three and it not be that big of a deal. Uh, side deck, main in the maxis, yep, good, 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 good. We've got a top four 60 card, Shadal Despia, I love this, this is awesome. This is more of like, I think this is probably played as a going second deck, but I'm not 100% sure. Maybe it's not, but this is awesome, it's awesome to see. This is something that I was looking at for a while. I just couldn't get the ratios right, I couldn't get its consistency right, but it looks like they did, and that's awesome, it's awesome to see. It's a really cool deck, it's only going to get better with the tier element stuff. And we got a top four Burning Abyss Phantom Knights. I would consider this more, well, I guess it's not just a Burning Abyss deck. It plays a lot of BAs, and it also plays a lot of Phantom Knights and a lot of extension. I really like stuff like this. It's got the adventure stuff. It's got the tour guides in it. Not too much conflict because you are playing 60. It's hard to get to the adventure stuff sometimes, but uh, when it does, it gets rolling. It gets very, very, it's very, very nice. I'm surprised they're not playing Beatrice. I think Beatrice is one of the best cards that's ever been printed, and I'm surprised they're not on it. Uh, when I was testing this deck out, uh, when scales came to three, um, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it was not when scales came to three, it was when, uh, Harpoor came to two, I was testing this with some Orca stuff in it as well, I was playing Beatrice, because Beatrice is insane, but they are not, and that's totally cool, it's a really cool list, I, I love seeing stuff like this, um, Sidek <laughs> Ophion, all right, moving on to the f last, but certainly not least, we got the DMC Meta Weekly number 37. 85 players, single Elim, one deck, best of three. Um, no side deck, of course. We got four Brand of Despia, two Dragon Link, two Swords Altini, one Adagnister, one Adventure Phantom Knights, one Dark Magician, one Flunderese, one Marincis, one Numeron, one Orcus, and one Salamangrate in the top 16. The winning deck was a Phantom Knights. This looks fairly standard from what I'm seeing. It's got some danger stuff in it. A little weird. Uh, got the Malicious instead of the Dasher. Playing Lancia and Scythe for their artifact targets. That's pretty cool. Um, but, you know, nothing too, you know, you know, out of left field here. They are, they cut the Imperm, I think. I think this guy was playing Imperm last week, which makes sense. It's, you know, proper to cut that. But this looks pretty standard and it's a very nice list. Uh, second place, we have a Marincess. It's good to see Marincess actually winning. I, I've been rating it very low on my tier list, but maybe I'm, maybe it's proven that's a little bit better, and that's good to hear. Um, it's good to see. I mean, they're playing the Shark Stuffs, Barrier Statue. Oh, that's toxic. The Shark Stuffs, but other than that, this doesn't look too crazy. I don't think they're playing Crystal Heart. They're not playing Crystal Heart, which you definitely don't need Crystal Heart. Um, that's just another layer of stuff you can play, but this, this looks pretty cool. I like this a lot. Get a top four Numeron, oh my gosh. Uh, this this does good in tournaments like this because there's no side deck, and it's hard to prepare for decks like this because you don't expect them, you know? They can catch you so off guard. Uh, steal game one very easily, and then just steal game three. You know, it's easy to win stuff like that with the deck like this. Um, so, very interesting. Top four Prince, once again, shout out to him. Uh, one of my teammates. He Top four was Sword Soul. Uh, very standard list. You know, I think it's probably the ten hand trap still. Got three, six... Uh, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yep, 10 hand traps. Nothing too crazy. Very standard. Then we got a top 8 Fluunderees. Oh, boy. I was watching some of this guy's games, and this guy was drawing. Like, God, it... Watching some of the games that he was playing, I was like, if I drew like that, like, I would never not play this deck. Like, this, this is the best deck in the game. Like, the way he was making a look uh, with some of the hands he was drawing in, like, the t in top 16 and... I was like, gosh, dude, this this deck, when it rolls, it's just the best deck in the game. It's it's so good. And it really is. Um But shout out to him for getting top top eight with it. Um the hardest part about this deck is the fact that it's not the most consistent. It does lose to itself, and that's pretty much it. But yeah, this looks like a very standard list. Moving on to top eight, we got a Salamangrate. Uh again, I'm gonna say the same thing I said before. The armored bitron's weird to me. The no called by is weird to me, but the hand traps, you just play a crap ton of hand traps. And just play a salad engine, and it works. Uh, then we got a top eight Despia here. This is a forty card Despia with the light hex sealed. I'm kind of surprised to see that. Normally, that comes into play. That was a very. This was big in the big when Despia first came out in the TCG, because you could make uh, dark uh, dark dragoon. No, I don't know. What, 
I don't even know how you say its name. Um, this guy right here, Red Eyes Arc Dragoon. You can make that with the dark, the light hex seal. Um, but you can't do that in Master Roll because that's banned. So I don't really know why they're playing the hex seal, but they are. I think it'd probably be better just to play an Ecclesia or a Snow. But again, you know, they got top eight and I didn't. So shout out to them. Top eight, uh, 43 card Despia. This is playing the Snow. This is playing the Hand Traps. This is a bit more of a standard build. This is who I lost to. I lost to this guy in top 16 because I'm terrible at Yu-Gi-Oh. I had clear lethal on board, and I just spun the wrong card with Unicorn. I spun a Mirror Jade instead of a uh, Masquerade, so killing the Masquerade made it so the Masquerade could come back and prevent me from lethaling, but if I just spun the Masquerade, I would have had lethal. I don't know what I was... I was thinking that I didn't want to get my field popped by Mirror Jade in the end of the phase of the turn, but I wasn't even thinking about the fact that, wait a minute, I have lethal this turn, so... Um, I'm... That was game three. I, I'm so mad at myself, but uh, you live and you learn, and it's just been one of those weeks. But this is a very standard list. This is very, it's, you know, got a lot of hand traps here, got a lot of big Despia engine, edge and stuff. It, there's nothing crazy here. This is a very well-rounded list, and I like to see it. I like playing Des Despia like that. Then top 16, this is me. Um, as per usual, this is the same list I've been playing. I haven't really been making any alterations to it. I really haven't had time to sit down and actually think about it. Um, so I've just been entering with the same list. Because like I, like I said, this has just been kind of a crazy week for me. Um, but I'm playing the Dill and the Quad Boral now over the Zombie Vampire. Because I think that Zombie Vampire doesn't come up enough. And when it comes up, it sometimes benefits your opponent. And sometimes it's... like Usually when it comes up, it's win more for me. And when it does come up and it's not win more, it just benefits my opponent. Um, while also benefiting me. So I would rather just play something that only benefits me. And so that's why I made the changes that I made. And I, I do like the change so far. Uh, then we got top 16, Attic Nister. Uh, Droll's in the main board, no max C. That's kind of wild. I don't know why you do that, but you do that. Uh, Kaiser Coliseum, this card's dirty. That card's absolutely insane, but nothing too crazy. Then we got a, uh, oh, this this is awesome. This is like a Chaos Despia Dragon Link pile. I'm going to try something like this because this is sick. I love seeing decks like this. This is very similar to that spiral thing I, we saw. I just love decks like this, and I want to try this. It looks so much fun. Um, but yeah, it's it's wild. I don't really know what to say about it, but it's cool. Then we got a top 16 Orcist. This guy topped last week, too. I think he got second place, la second place last week, which is really cool. This deck's awesome. I love Orcist. Uh, I just wish it had its... I just wish it was unlimited. You know, because I don't think it'll be that great, but I think it'll be competitive. But, yeah, shout out to them. Then we got top 16 Dark Magician, branded Dark Magician. <laughs> this is branded with the Dark Magician engine, and that's absolutely awesome to see. You know, like, this is this is amazing. You know, 42 cards, lots of hand traps. Good, just love to see it. Uh, this is this is great. This is what I love. This is what this is what I live for, you know, seeing decks like this. I, what the hell is happening? I'm sorry, I don't mean to say that word, but why are we playing 42 cards in Upstar Goblin? Why, why is that happening? That doesn't make any sense. That makes that makes literally no sense. Why 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 is that why why is that happening? Why are we playing forty two cards and three upstar goblins? Upstar goblins meant to make it so you're playing a 39, 38, 37 card deck. And like what? Why are you playing chicken game and over forty cards? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, I'm so confused, but you know, to each their own. Um, we go on top sixteen. Uh, top sixteen Despia. Uh, this is the Allure build. Very cool. Um, I like this build a lot. I feel terrible for this guy. Uh, I was watching his top 16 match, and, and he had it. And he had the game won, but his PC crashed on him. <laughs> um, so depressing. But, you know, you know that is kind of how online Yu-Gi-Oh! works sometimes. Uh, Twin Twisters in the main board makes sense for playing a non-side deck tournament. But yeah, this is it's nothing too crazy here. Then we got a top 16 Despia. This is also very standard. You know, we got the... Maxis, the Ash Blossoms, the Edgem stuff, no Allures, no Droplets, but, you know, overall it's very standard. Top 16, Sword Soul, 10E, very standard here. We got 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 hand traps. You know, very clean. And uh, that's going to do it. That's going to do it for this week's meta report. Uh, sorry if this was a little bit longer one. I kind of went in a little bit more depth on some stuff, um, but... Doing the quick breakdown really quickly. For our first place decks, we had a Flunderies, a Flunderies, a Virtual World, a Despia, a Salamangrate, a Pendulum Magician, and a Phantom Knight. 
Those are the different decks that won. They went for second place. We had a Blind Second, an 8 Axe deck, a Fluenda Reese deck, a Medolce deck, a Salamangrate, a... Can't even read my handwriting. This is an Adamancipator and a Marincess. Top four, we had a Pure Sword Soul times two, uh, three Des Brand of Despia, one Salamangrate, two Sword Soul Tinnies, one Pendulum Magician, one Shindal Branded, one Burning Abyss Phantom Knights, one Numeron. For top eight, we had one Phantom Knight, three Despia, two, no, sorry, one Sword Soul, one Pile Spiral, one Salamangrate, two Dragon Links, one Marincess, one Fluenderese, and one Salamangrate. In the top 16, we had one Dragon Link, one Adagnister, one Chaos Branded Pile, uh, one Orcist, one Dark Magician, two Despias, and one Sword Soul Tenny. So, uh, just going to go and say thank you guys so much for tuning into the video. I apologize again for not ha not uploading more videos this past week. It's kind of just been, there's been a lot going on uh, in my personal life, but we are back, hopefully better than ever, and I'm ready to you know, make some good content. So thank you guys again so much for watching. Please be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and uh, let me know like what videos you'd like to see in the future. And uh, well, that being said, have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.